good morning! Today we are going to be getting our last geometry concept and we'll be practicing it a little bit more tomorrow. And these are the inverse trig functions that we're going to be talking about. And inverse is really a fancy word for undoing something. So for instance, if we're talking about multiplication, the inverse of multiplication is division. And if you're talking about squaring an object, the inverse function would be taking the square root of an object. So here, where we're talking about inverse, we're just saying undoing, and trig functions are cosine, sine, and tangent at this point. They're all those functions that we learned to do with trigonometry. They're the foundation of trigonometry. So inverse trig function, according to then the definition, putting those words to use, that makes it the opposite operation for sine, cosine, and tangents. They undo each other. So if you look on your calculator, you can actually find these inverse functions stored above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on most calculators. So rather than hitting sine, I would hit second sine, and that would give me the inverse sine function. And you know it's the inverse because it has that little power of negative one, and that is the shorthand for inverse in mathematics. So as long as you see that little negative one, that power of negative one after the sine, cosine, or tangent, you know that you're working with the inverse function. And the question is, why would we ever use the inverse function? What use is it for us as mathematicians? Well, inverse trig functions are super useful because they solve for an angle when you've been given two sides of a right triangle. So any time that you need to find your theta, rather than the sides themselves, you'll be using either the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, or the inverse tangent. And we can actually lay out for ourselves our formulas. Now all of these formulas are going to give me theta, because all of these solve for the angle. And if we labeled our sides as O, H, and A, the opposite side, adjacent side, and hypotenuse, well, that would tell us that if I took, if I wanted the inverse, or the, if I wanted theta, I could take the inverse sine of my opposite side divided by my hypotenuse, because sine normal, normally relates opposite and hypotenuse. And the inverse cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so you're swapping the position when you're doing this negative one one, where our theta used to be in the parentheses, now it's outside of it. And tangent is O over A. Now, this is just the formula form, and if you don't feel comfortable with it, don't worry yet, because we're gonna do a bunch of examples so that you can hopefully start to feel a little bit more comfortable with how to use these inverse functions. Let's start with this one here. If I wanted to find this angle of elevation A, and I've been given two sides of a right triangle, all I need to do is figure out what inverse function will I use. I know it's an inverse function that I want because what I want to have is an angle. So I want to first just label my sides just like I would have before. And here I have the hypotenuse, it's opposite the right angle, and the adjacent side. It's attached to the angle that I'm talking about. And since I have A and H, normally I'd be saying, well, the cosine of theta is equal to A over H. But I don't want the cosine of theta. I want theta by itself. So I can undo this cosine by taking the inverse cosine of both sides, leaving me with theta is equal to the inverse cosine, cosine negative 1, of A over H. And this is a point where I can just fill it in. I want to fill in the inverse cosine in my calculator, so I got cosine to the negative one of a, which is 6, 7, 5, 0, divided by h, 8, 1, 0, 0. And so I could put that all right into my calculator, giving me an answer of 33.557. So that means theta is approximately equal to 33.557 degrees. And notice we are in degrees here. Please always double check that your calculator is in degree before you start these. Again, going to mode, 
and then suck and quit when you want to get out of there. So we're going to do that same setup. Now in this one, we want to know what is our angle A. So if we want to find our angle A, start by labeling. I have my opposite side and I have my adjacent side. So normally I'd say, well, my tangent of my angle that I don't know is equal to opposite 8 over adjacent 15. But since I want to get theta by itself, I have to undo this tangent by using the opposite operation. So I take the inverse tangent of both sides and I get theta is equal to the inverse tan of 8 over 15. Once more, this brings us back to calculator work. So go ahead, put in the inverse tan of 8 over 15. It should look like this in your calculator. Please make sure that both numbers are inside your parentheses. And you get 28.072. And again, we're talking about angles. So we're talking about degrees. Last but not least, we have one where you have a triangle where you can use any one that you want. I have the hypotenuse, I have the adjacent, and I have the opposite. Now sometimes this sends people into a panic because they're like, well, how do I know which one to pick? Too much information can be panicky inducing, but it's really actually a good thing because it means that you can pick any operation that you want. You can set up sine, cosine, or tangent. I'm just going to use sine because I haven't used it yet. So I know that the sine of theta, the angle that I want, which is also labeled T here, would be my opposite over my hypotenuse, or 33 over 65. To get theta by itself, I take the inverse sine of both sides, leaving me with theta is equal to the inverse sine of 33 over 65. And that, in my calcula calculator, will tell me that we have an angle measure of 30.51. Now there's a couple things that you might want to watch out for. First off, if you have a very small answer, probably you should double check your mode. And your answer should really always be between 0 and 90 because these two angles could not be smaller than 0, that wouldn't make sense. And they can't be bigger than 90, otherwise this triangle would not make any sense since all three angles together have to equal 180, and this angle alone already equals 90. So you don't want a number bigger than 90. So if your calculator gives you an error, by the way, sometimes it will. Like if I had tried to take the inverse cosine of um, the wrong way around, 8100 0, 0, divided by 6750, it's going to give me something called a domain error, and that's just telling me that my answer doesn't make sense because cosine is a number where the decimal proportion should not be a number that's that's all that large, and the number I just put in was actually greater than 1, so it breaks it. It's, it, it has an error. So if you ever see an error message, double check that your fraction is set up right. Most likely you accidentally put in the reciprocal. Now, of course, you always also have to watch out for word problems because they can throw us off just by how they're laid out. But anytime that you can draw a picture, draw a picture, and I'm just going to show you how to recognize a problem that will use inverse trig functions. So let's say we have a cell tower that's anchored to the ground by a supporting wire. The wire is attached to a point on the tower 120 feet above the ground. So I'm just going to sketch myself a tower. Here's where it attaches, and that is 120 feet above the ground. So the point it attaches is 120 feet above the ground. And it is attached to the level ground 150 feet away from the base tower. So where this line attaches to the ground is 150 feet away. Now I want to know what is this angle of elevation for the wire. So what is this right here? And I know I want this one because remember angle of elevation goes from the ground upwards. Now since I'm looking for an angle and I know that this has to be a right triangle and I know two of its sides, that means I'm using trigonometry and I'm going to be using the inverse trig functions to find that angle. So that means I should label my sides. And here I can see I have the side that's opposite my angle and the side that's adjacent to my angle. So that tells me I should be using tangent. 
Normally we'd say that the tan of theta is equal to my opposite over my adjacent, but since I want to be finding the angle, I'm going to use the inverse tan of both sides to get theta is equal to the inverse tangent of our O, which is 120, over our A, 150. And that is wonderful calculator work, because it's not a hard thing to type in. And that gives us 120 over 150. And a an final answer of 38.6598. So 38.66. And of course we are in degrees, so make sure that you mark those as degrees. We are going to stop here for today and Tomorrow we will be doing a few practice problems with finding both the angle and finding various sides. And you need to decide if you are using the inverse function or the standard function for each of those. I hope you guys have a great day.